Hey guys, and welcome to Wrestling Days. So, just finished watching uh, NXT, and it was a pretty good show. Um, so, it starts off with Samoa Joe promo. Uh, he's obviously talking about the fact that he's delivered on his promise to become the new champion. And then uh, Eric Young uh, comes out. Um, not a massive surprise because obviously this has been recorded in advance, so knew that he was going to debut. Um, to be honest though, I don't read the spoilers, so I didn't know it was going to be this week. I certainly didn't know it was going to be at the start of the show uh, during a Samoa Joe promo. Um, so that was cool. Um, I think he talks really well. It was a really good promo from him. Um, you know, when he was going, you know exactly who I am. I was, I was kind of like, that's that's really cool. I'm into that. Uh, so I thought, I thought that bit was good. Um, set up the main event. Um, was really surprised this match was happening so soon. Um, kind of felt as if they could build towards this, but no, they they made it the main event for for today. Either Joe loses and he's only just become the champion, or Eric Young loses and he's only just turned up. So uh, Summit was going to have to give. So I was, I was really looking forward to the main event, but I was confused by it. Uh, first proper match was Tessa Blanchard going up against Nia Jax. Um, I, I, I've said it before, right, and you might think it's petty, but I hate, hate Tessa Blanchard's ring attire. Uh, I just think she's the son of a Hall of Famer. She's absolutely not the son of a Hall of Famer. Uh, I don't know why she has to have that bit cut out at the front uh, so that you can see like her breasts and whatnot. Um, again, I mean, like if this was five years ago, I wouldn't even mention it, but we're talking about women's wrestling now. Um, and you would have thought that she would be, I don't know, paying that a little more respect. It just, it winds me up. It really does wind me up. Uh, it just looks out of place. Uh, I mean, Eva Marie does it, but I understand why Eva Marie does it. I just, I just think someone of her stature, her standing, um, should should have uh, a, a little more conservative uh, ring attire. Um, and don't don't get me wrong, you know, I'm not someone that's all stuck up or anything like that. But I just think this is this is a time to move away from that. And uh, I'm just surprised that she's not. Um, Nia Jax, you know, she, she came out and uh, she's looking really good. I think they've altered her music a little bit. Um, there's just a couple of bits in there that I don't recall hearing before. Um, nothing drastic, but uh, yeah, you know, it, this was a squash. An absolute squash match. And uh, yeah, Nia picks up the victory, uh, drops the leg and uh, I mean Tessa's hmm, Tessa's lying there and she's looking up and when the leg's about to hit she turns her head to the side and that annoyed me um, just because it's like look if you if you can do that then I'm sure you can get up um, but no I don't want to hate on the girl for no reason but she's I don't know she's just annoying me uh, next we had Ty Dillinger against Austin Aries thought this was quite a good match um, uh, Ty Dillinger's really over with his uh, tent gimmick. I mean, no surprises there. Austin Aries seems to be struggling a little bit. Um, this was the one of the, well, do I want to say this was his best showing so far? I, I was certainly entertained by it. Um, the finisher was a 450 uh, splash, which was really uh, impressive. We've seen it before, but uh, you know, it, it needed something like that in this match. Um, it's a couple of little moments, not not the greatest match, but you know it was it was fairly good for what it was. Good TV match. Um, I mean, and then we see like a backstage segment of him talking to uh, Kathy Kelly, and uh, he's eating a banana or he's got a banana, and he's like, "My potassium levels are low. I'm going off to eat this banana. You're looking very nice today." Um, it's just like it's a little bit. I'm not into it. I'm not. I'm struggling with this TNA invasion in NXT because I've never really watched TNA. And so all these guys are over because they've been on TNA. But I'm not seeing anything. I, I'm, there's nothing that's, that's uh, you know, really blowing me away at the moment. So Austin Aries has got it all to do for me. Um, he is not the greatest man who ever lived uh, yet or at the moment. 
Next we've got the Hype Bros against the Revival and uh, I hated pretty much everything about this. I'm not a Hype Bros fan. Uh, I'm not a Revival fan. Uh, there wasn't really any spots in the match that I enjoyed. Um, it was over pretty quickly. Um, this was a low point for me and uh, yeah, I just, I don't care. I mean, Revival win, fine, but I have no idea where the Hype Bros go from here. They really are lacking direction um they just can't they can't seem to get you know any kind of momentum together um and it feels like they should have by now so hmm let's let's see uh next it was revealed that alex riley will go up against nakamura next week um and then we had another match we had no way jose who seems to be really connecting with the crowd he's got great charisma um so he came out and I I missed who he was up against. I don't know the guy's name. Um, but uh, I joked on Twitter that this other guy looked like a, a young rock with hair. Um, and uh, yeah, there wasn't much to this match. There's nothing from No Way Jose that's impressive move-wise. He's just, he's, he's pretty clean with what he does. Uh, his execution's pretty good. His transitions from moves are very good. Um, but it's his charisma that obviously shines through. That's that's what he's there for. Um, I think he's there to kind of take up that opening spot that used to be Enzo and Big Cass. Um, I think the hope is that No Way Jose will get people on their feet. Uh, and, it, and it seems to be working so far. So, yeah, more power to him. Next, we're told that Finn Balor will return next week. Um, and it'll be interesting to see what he's got to say. Uh, I think we're building towards another match, Samoa Joe Finn Balor match. Um, would make sense for him to get a rematch before he disappears. A lot of rumours that you know Extreme Rules is going to be when Balor makes his main roster um, debut. But then those same people were saying that it was going to be payback, so we'll have to see. But I'm expecting um, Balor Joe to get announced uh, for for the next takeover. And then that brought us to the main event. It was a good match. Uh, Joe was pretty dominant. Um, Eric certainly had his moments. Uh, but there was a fantastic enziguri from uh, Joe. And Eric Young just like... It's as if Eric Young was racing to fall to the mat. It was like I've never seen someone fall to the mat as quick as what Eric Young did. Um, that was that. It was cool. Um, Eric Young, you know, managed to get himself together and uh, delivered a fantastic elbow. It was like macho man esque, uh, which was really smart. And uh, you know, there, there was other bits. I can remember Joe going through the ropes uh, to the outside and uh, obviously delivering the muscle buster for the victory. Um, it's it's just amazing that uh Eric Young has lost his first match on his first day uh against Samoa Joe. I know it's the champion but uh he, he made him tap out. Uh that can't be good for Young going forward. Really can't. I don't I just don't understand. Um surely it would have been better for Joe to be in a main event against someone else and have uh Young come out and interfere or I don't know. I don't know. Um, it seems like they've brought in, you know, Austin Aries and Eric Young, and I don't think there's any plans for either of them. <sighs> seems like NXT have brought in Austin Aries and Eric Young just to kind of, you know, fill out the mid card. Um, I don't think there's plans for either of them to be NXT champions, uh, well, not at the moment anyway. So, yeah, it was a good episode. Uh, there was a lot of good in ring stuff, and I enjoyed, you know, seeing what was going to happen next. And there was a few surprises. Obviously, Eric Young debut, and you know, there was there was a lot of talking points from this. Um, but there's a lot of questions and a lot of things you just go, I don't, I don't get that. I don't understand. Um, I mean, NXT for me at the moment is going through a rebuilding process uh, because obviously losing Sami Zayn was huge for them. And then uh, Baron Corbin as well, you know, Enzo and Cass, they've lost a lot of people um, in a relatively short space of time. So they're kind of rebuilding. Um, they've got some They've got some great performers, great wrestlers, um, but there's an awful lot that are bedding in, an awful lot. Uh, it kind of feels like they could do with some, you know, established kind of stars down there. It might be worth just taking a few low-card uh, talent 
you know, the likes of R Truth, Fandango, um, it Gold Dust, that would be cool. Uh, and uh, just getting them down in NXT for a little bit, just just the odd appearance, maybe a different appearance each week by someone. Um, you know, they could just have a match against you know, Johnny Gagano, Tommaso Ciampa, uh, those kind of guys, and just uh, yeah, kind of give them give them a good big name to get a victory over. Um, Cool. Uh, so yeah, it was it was a decent show. It was a decent show. Uh, don't forget, you can follow me on Twitter at Wrestling Days UK. And if you haven't subscribed to this, it'd be brilliant if you did. Um, and uh, hopefully, I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.